Hey you folks, Quillateen here and welcome to Unity 3D tutorial where we focus on how to make a very sort of simple and generic scoreboard. I get a lot of people who ask me um, how to make a scoreboard and it's not really something that you can answer in a general sense necessarily because it is going to be very by game to game but we're going to do our best here and try to come up with something that works kind of in all projects. Note that I am going to be using Unity 4.6, specifically 460F3 um, and the reason for that is I'm going to be using the new Unity 3D GUI system, the new user interface system that came out with 4.6. So if you want to follow along, you have to make sure you have 4.6 or better. The free version is perfectly fine. I will be using the pro version, but I'm not going to do anything that needs the pro version at all. So I'm going to go ahead and create the project. We don't need to import anything at all. Whether you want the default set up for 3D or 2D doesn't matter. I'm actually going to leave them on 3D because I'm going to explicitly switch to a 2D mode at some point to show something. So we're going to go ahead and dive right into that. So we've got our empty project and we're going to have to create a few things. So the scoreboard I'm going to make in this case, this notice this is not a high scores list. The idea is this is a scoreboard, the sort of thing you might see in a multiplayer first person shooter or MOBA, or maybe uh, the sort of values you might see in something like a Starcraft real time strategy ish kind of game, that sort of thing. It's we're not making an actual game here in any way whatsoever. We're just doing the fundamentals. So there's two parts to the scoreboard code. The first part is actually tracking the data. Data, and the second part is showing it to the end user. So we're going to start with uh, tracking the data. And to do that, we're going to create a script. We're going to go ahead and create a C sharp script that we're going to call, um, I don't know, score manager. Seems relatively straightforward. And so this is going to be responsible for actually keeping track of what our current score is. So it's going to be a normal sort of mono develop component. Let me go ahead and whoops. How come it's not? Uh, there we go. Inbigin. Um, and uh, let's, it's going to use a few slightly more advanced features here. Uh, it, it's unfortunately not going to be super newbie uh, friendly just because the structures I'm going to use are going to be more generalized and can, they can be equipped for all kinds of different data types. So fundamentally, what we want is some sort of map. We need some sort of map that goes from, say, a username to a score. And so we could do something really quite simple. We could, I don't know, set up some sort of array um, to try to track that. There's a few different ways of doing it. Again, I'm trying to generalize it. So in this case, score, I may want to track multiple scores. In a first person shooter in a MOBA, for example, I might want to track uh, multiple scores, kills, deaths, assists, for example. Um, for something like a real time strategy game, I might want to track stuff like, um, uh, resources mined versus resources spent, buildings destroyed, units destroyed, units built, a huge variety of stats. It's less of a score manager and almost more of a stats manager, for example, over here. So I want this very generic -y kind of structure where what I can do, um, instead of this, the, the map we're building is going to look like... Um, list of users, which maps to a user, which goes to like a list of scores for that user. And in practice, what we're going to use is a data type called a dictionary. And specifically, this is in the library over here, system.collections.generic. I don't know why Unity by default adds system.collections everywhere. I'm not a fan of any of the data types in system.collections, but I love system.collections.generic. If anyone knows how to change this default Unity template file um, to customize it the way I want, please let me know in the comments. I will love you forever. So we're going to use that, and what we're going to use is this dictionary type. And so these generics are very cool because what you do is you can define in these brackets what kind of data is actually contained. For example, one of the simplest generics that I use quite a lot is a list. So I could do something like a list of um, anything, a list of strings. So list, list of string, okay? Um, something like, I don't know, all usernames or something like that. In a lot of ways, this works very much like an array. You can reference stuff like this, um, like so. So, you know, the zeroth item in this list would be some sort of value. Uh, I can add to it. And that's one of the things you can't do to normal arrays. Oh, it's because of where I am. Uh, if I were in a, a function, void start, for example, I should be able to go all usernames dot add. Yeah. So you can add values to it. You can remove and so on. And in an array, normally you can't change this. So a list is kind of a dynamic array. 
The dictionary is a slightly more complicated version because it actually needs two types. So you pass it, say, a string and an integer. So this is something like user scores. Okay? And then the way you can refer to your dictionary data is by doing something like this, because instead of, unlike an array where you're always uh, addressing things based on an index, same thing with a list, here we can address it by a username. So Quill 18's user, or uh, Quill 18 score is uh, 9001, right? So you can do that sort of thing in a dictionary, which is super cool. You can add, you can remove, you can loop through all of the, uh, the keys, which is this part, and so on. Now, we're going to use a particularly complex setup um, in terms of what most people can deal with. So what we could do is we could say something like user kills, user deaths, user assists and so on and so forth whatever data you might want to track i don't like that because i find it kind of rather unwieldy you keep having to add more stuff um, and it's not the sort of thing you can reuse in multiple projects instead and this is where it gets i, I realize a little bit wonkily for people so let, let's say we do something uh, let's call it player scores yeah like that player scores we're gonna have a dictionary where the, the key is a string, we'll, we'll use a username or whatever, some sort of unique identifier. It can be a player, like a numerical player ID or an email address or a username or whatever you want, but that's gonna be stored in the string in this particular case. And the, the value, instead of the, uh, the value being something specific like an integer, we're actually gonna use yet another dictionary inside of this one, which is going to have another string as the key and then finally an integer. The reason for this structure is because I wanna be able to say something like, Player scores, Quill 18, uh, number of kills is equal to 9,001. And, you know, deaths equals, well, zero, because I'm super good at this game, right? So that's the sort of structure that I want. And this, even though it looks a little hairy, will allow us to do exactly that and be oh, just beautiful sexiness to work with. So we're going to do that. Now, I'm actually going to get rid of the, well, I'll leave the start function in here for now. But we're going to look at what kind of functions our score manager is going to have. Because, especially because this structure might be a little bit hairy, I don't want to make this public. You'll notice I didn't put public in front of this. I don't want to let anything directly modify this list. And part of the reason is, if I, especially back up a couple of steps, if I had this line right now and I ran this. Actually, let's do that. Let's go into Unity. Let's run this. We'll, sh we'll see some errors. Play. What? You should be freaking out and giving me giant errors. Oh, derp. Score manager is a script that exists, but it's not on anything. I'm going to go ahead and make a dummy object. I do this in a lot of my games. I'll make a dummy object called scripts. And these are for global scripts like a score manager, for example. It doesn't need, whoops, it doesn't need to be, um, on, on any particular real object. It just needs to exist inside of the game in some fashion. And so I just make this sort of generic scripts things. A lot of times I put like underscores around it to make it like really obvious that this is a weird kind of thing. And then I attach a score manager to it. So now score manager will exist in the world and will um, and will run its start function. Also, I, all the time out of habit, I'm always hitting control S, control S, control S to save uh, as I go so I don't lose anything. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and make a scene default scene that way i've got it it's in my project now every time i hit control s you guys will get a pop-up so let's hit play we'll get a nice hairy error message right away no reference exception why is that well we haven't initialized player score player scores is null right now and we're trying to do something with something that is null that's super bad let's not do that we have to instead initialize it we have to instantiate it well actually we just have to sort of allocate it in, in a sense so we can say something like player scores equals new dictionary la da 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 we needs all this la da 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 which is exactly the same la da 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 as over here to tell it exactly what kind of dictionary to create let's put some little spaces around here make that look a little bit cleaner okay now let's try to run it are we still gonna get errors you betcha now what key not found exception the given key was not present in the dictionary what's going on all right dictionaries are kind of weird if you're trying to do something to an entry in a dictionary which doesn't exist player scores doesn't have an entry called quill 18 and yet we're trying to access it and do something that's a no-no that's that's no good so okay 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 so we're now we're going to try 
We're going to be like, okay, what if, how do we instantiate this? Well, player scores quill 18 is just a dictionary string int. Okay, mu dictionary string int. Good. Now you might think, well, are we going to get an errors on this kills line? No. And the reason is, there's no error. Because we can assign, just like here, we are assigning. We can assign to something that doesn't exist in the dictionary. But anything else would be an error. And here's an example of anything else. If we try to get uh, int uh, num deaths from this, like this, and put in deaths. If we try this, we will once again get, get an error. Oh, given key was not present in the dictionary. We cannot read from a key that doesn't exist. We can assign to it, but we can't read to it. You can do checks. What you can do here is we could do something like um, if player scores dot contains a key called deaths, then do something. And if it doesn't, then we do that. Anyway, all this is to show you why it would be bad for us to have to access this player scores publicly everywhere because we'd have to do all these contains keys checks and oh, was it instantiated and do a new? No, we want that all contained inside of this class very, very beautifully. So I'm going to actually get rid of all this. We're going to talk about how the outside world will interact with our program. It will do so with three core functions. First, there'll be a public int function called get score string username string uh, score type, I guess we can call it. Right? That's the, the first function that we're going to get. We're going to give it a username. We'll say get score quill 18 kills, and it will tell us how many kills we've got. And inside of this, we'll make sure that, you know, we've got a, a legal value and all sorts of things. There'll be another one called public uh, int, no, public void set score, string username, string score type, int value. We're going to set a particular score to a particular value. And then, and I always like to do this out of convenience, it's very nice, change score, string username, string score type, int um, amount. So this changes a score by a certain amount, as opposed to setting it to a specific value. You know, if you if you if you're if you're picking up what I'm putting down. So let's start with get score. So ideally, in the end, what we're going to want to do is do something like return player scores username score type. That's what we want to do. Now we're obviously going to have to check a few things. The first thing we have to do is check if player scores is equal to null, we're going to want to do something. Now, really, we're going to have to start with this line in all three of these. And here's the thing. We have to instantiate our player scores, right? We talked about it here. Player scores equals new dictionary, all the rest of this gunk. This is how we create this object. Do we want this in the start? No, we do not. And the reason is every game object with a component on it that has a start function gets called when the game starts, basically, if they're, if they're in the scene, they get called. You can't control what order the starts get called in. You can fudge it by using, say, an awake call, which I believe runs before start, um, and so on and so forth. The, the danger is, what if another object somewhere in the game is trying to access the score before this start has run? That would be bad. So instead, instead of doing this in the start, what if we had a function that we'll call, say, init, you know, to initialize things. And we put it here. And what if we called it, so someone's trying to get a score and we might not be initialized. Let's call init. You say, well, whoa, whoa, we don't want to reset the player scores to a new object every time someone tries to get a score. You're right. What if we only initialize? If player score is not equal to null, then we just return right away. If player scores isn't null, that means we already have a player score. We don't need to initialize anything. We'll just quit early. And then we put this init call at the beginning of get score, set score, and change score. This function here, if player scores is not null, if we've already been initialized at least once, is a super fast call. We call it, it'll return instantly. There's basically no overhead whatsoever. This will not make your program slow. And now you're guaranteed, no matter what operation anyone tries anywhere in your program at any time, we can guarantee that player scores will be properly initialized first. All right, all right that, I think that's okay. We don't even need to call init and start. Why bother? Right? At this point, we know things will be initialized when we need them. We don't even have to worry. All right, so that's step one in get score. 
So first we initialize it. Then we do need to check that the username is in our in our array. So if player scores dot contains if I can spell contains the key username equals false. We have no score record at all for this username. What's the correct behavior? I don't know. Depends on your application, of course. I think most of the time, though, we're probably going to want to return zero. Right? So it's easy to imagine that there's a player that's in the game but hasn't gotten any scores yet whatsoever. Well, wouldn't that mean his score is zero in every category? I think that's probably reasonable. And to um, follow up with that, we'll check to see. We can't return score type if they don't have a score type registered for the score type. So we have to verify that player scores dot or player scores username. At this point, we know this username is valid, but does it contain a key for score type? For example, deaths or assists or kills. If it's equal to false, then again, hey, let's uh, whoops, let's return zero. That's a pretty good default. I think that's fine. And then finally, if we get to here, the username has a record for a particular score type. Let's return that number. Excellent. What about set score? Well, set score will go through a similar-ish kind of process because ultimately what set score wants to do is it wants to say this score type equals this value. But before we do that, we have to make sure that the username, we have to make sure this bit works, which is to say, we have to make sure the username exists inside of our player scores. If player scores does not contain this username, then we actually don't want to return. We just want to make sure that everything's initialized okay. So we want to make sure to set player scores usernames equal to a new dictionary of type string int. String comma int dictionary is this username. And then we can safely set it. And that's good. How does change score works? Well, change score will actually just use the get score plus set score. So we can do something. And again, as I usually do in my tutorials, I make a lot of temporary variables to make things explicit. Current score is equal to get score, username, score type, which might be a zero. If this didn't already exist in the database, this will return zero, which is fine. And then we're going to call set score of username, score type, equals current score. Cur eh? Oh, I'm missing a comma. That's why it's freaking out. Current score plus the new amount. Done. Easy peasy. We change the score by some amount. This could be a positive number, or we could be passing it a negative number if we're trying to take points away from something. But there we go. And this will actually, this it, I'm calling it a score manager, but it's really a stat tracker for anything. Although, admittedly, this is a stat tracker for anything that's an integer, right? If you want to do decimal type stuff, then this thing here would instead be a float, although you'd have to change everything else as well. We're going to keep it an integer because... Deaths, kills, assists, in our particular example, those are all whole numbers. Or in a StarCraft kind of uh, example, um, resources mined, that would also be a whole number. So I think that's going to work perfectly fine. And that's good. And what we can do is we can run a little check. In our start here, let's throw in some dummy data and see how things look. Let's um, set score for player quill 18, number of kills equals over 9,000. And then we'll go debug.log. Hey, uh, how many, this player Quill18, how many kills does he have? Note that spelling is important. If I were to capitalize this here, actually, let's do that. I've got a, a capital K inappropriately. If I hit play, I've got zero kills. And that's because these two don't match. They are completely different stats as far as our system is concerned. So let's replace it with a lowercase k. Hit play. Ah, there we go. Quill has over 9,000 kills. Wonderful, lovely. Of course, this console log is not how we're actually going to want to display these scores to the player. So now we're going to have to make a user interface. Um, I'm going to be using the new Unity GUI system that has come as of Unity 4.6. It's not a full tutorial for that. Um, hopefully we'll get a time to do a full proper tutorial for it. Again, I really suggest that you check out the Unity's their own, the actual official Unity 3D tutorials on the matter, but uh, stay tuned. Hopefully there'll be some more stuff. So 
we're going to go, we're going to create, and we need some user interface stuff. Now, technically, there needs to be a canvas and there needs to be an event system in your scene for all the UI stuff to work. But what's nice is if we say go and create a panel, it'll automatically create the canvas and the event system for us. And our panel over here, this is going to be the scoreboard panel. This is where we're going to display the stuff. Now, the panel, you'll notice that when we put it into play, it got everything got kind of a pale blue over here. If I disable this, we got our dark blue, which is from our camera background right here. But if I enable it, it's sort of gone pale. And the reason for that is a panel by default, a panel and an image. I can also add UI image, right? Panels and images are exactly the same in the Unity GUI system. They just have a couple of different default uh, options. You can see very clearly if I toggle between these two, they're exactly the same. In fact, the panel is just an image component, but it automatically sets its source image to background and it sets its color to an alpha of 100, which makes it kind of transparent. Whereas the image, A, starts with no sprite whatsoever, and B, its color is set to full alpha, which is fully opaque. So if I delete that image and I go to the scoreboard and I can say, I can tune this alpha value, fully opaque, fully transparent, or somewhere in the middle, because why not? So this is the scoreboard panel. By default, panels will also be anchored to the full of your canvas. So at this point, I'm gonna do a couple things. I'm gonna flip my scene view. See, if I move around here in the scene view, I can actually see my user interface, but it's huge. Because of the way that the user interface is calculated, Every all your UI stuff is huge in your scene view, which is fine. And then to avoid having to rotate around and try to like pan around and stuff, I'm just gonna go up here and hit the 2D button, which will orientate my scene in the correct orientation for all 2D stuff, whether that's the 2D graphic system or the UI system, which is what's going on here. The other thing you'll notice is if I resize my game view, everything here changes shape. And the reason is your canvas, the canvas here, is set to the exact pixel size of your screen. So you can see here the width is 674. Now there's a bit of a glitch here. If I change the width of my window, you'll see that number hasn't changed. But if I click off and click on, now it correctly says that now my width is 840, which makes sense. I just made it bigger, so this number is bigger. Same thing with the height. It's currently 599. If I go and shrink it this way, and then again I'll click off and click on, we'll see that the height is now 289 as it's been shrunk down. So the canvas changes. And by default, your panel is anchored to all four corners and set to stretch. If I change the panel to be, say, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to decrease my view. I'm going to change my panel to be just centered. And then I'm going to stretch my view open again. Should be pretty obvious what's happening. This white screen, this white edge is my canvas. But this thing here is my actual panel, which is no longer stretching with my view which I think is fine. I'm gonna go ahead and set uh, my scoreboard panel. I'm gonna keep it centered, and I'm just gonna give it a, a size of like 600 by 400 for the sake of argument. Obviously, what I'm gonna do here is gonna be insanely ugly, and you'll not use it as is um, in your particular application. So we've got that. I'm gonna go ahead and throw on some text here. We're gonna call this the, um, the title. So we're gonna call this the scoreboard of awesome. Question mark. Oh, it's a little bit too short. We go ahead and zoom in here and big in that. And we'll go ahead and anchor it to the top left corner. Now, if I just click here, it's going to set the anchor to the top left corner, which means if I start to move my panel around, you can see it's locked to whatever the position of the top left corner is. Um, but if I go and hold Alt and Shift and then click the top left corner, it'll actually move my thing up there. And I'd probably want to move it to get a little bit of a border. But again, this is going to look ugly, so let's not worry too much about the placement. Now we have, um, what's our scoreboard going to show? It's going to show us the username, the number of kills, the number of deaths, the number of assists. A very classic sort of MOBA first person shooter kind of scenario. Uh, we'll go ahead and set up some headers. Um, so we're going to want some more text. So I'm going to call this header uh, username. And then the content will just say username. And I'm going to go ahead and grab this and just sort of tuck it in right over there. That's fine. Duplicate it. A variety of times take these and so this one needs to go say all the way over to the right there i'll have to actually set my sizes again i'm doing this whoa didn't mean to reset it that way I'm doing this very roughly very quickly and very ugly as well 
there we go something like that um, but we'll rename these so the second one is going to be um, kills and kills and then we're gonna have uh, deaths and deaths and then finally we're gonna have assists and assists so that's going to be it so the um, this is going to bring us to the end of this video in the next video underneath here we're going to have a list that populates in real time along with what actually happens in the game see you guys next time for that stay tuned if you haven't done it already uh, if you can like and subscribe and comment and share and do all that good stuff really appreciate it it actually makes a tremendous difference it's very very helpful see you next time folks bye bye